A safety alert tonight, a danger out on the water that could turn deadly and it's not drowning. Fox Guys, Margaret Ann Carter has the safety alert talking with families who say they weren't aware until it was too late. As someone who grew up on the boat in Charleston, we enjoyed our time on the water. We knew to be careful of falling in without a life vest or getting into an accident on the water, but no one was ever afraid of getting carbon monoxide poisoning. It actually wasn't until one of our producers told me that her friend died from unknowingly inhaling carbon monoxide gases on a boat. And so we knew we could help get the word out about this. After doing some digging myself, I found families across the country with loved ones who suffered the same fate. And now they're working to spread awareness on this silent killer that they otherwise wouldn't have known about. This girl is on fire. I mean, you can't even call it an accident because it's something that could be prevented in our opinion. She was uh, on a part of the boat that um, wasn't marked as unsafe. Needless to say, being on the back of the boat the majority of the day, um, she was taking in poisonous carbon monoxide. The first breeze breaks open wide in the river. As the boat was idling, she went to the back of the boat, just you know, quickly jumped in the water. Within seconds, 21-year-old Ali Sidlowski slipped under the surface. It didn't make sense. Like, how can this happen? Tracy and Dave Sidlowski were in shock. They had never heard of carbon monoxide poisoning on an open-air boat, so warning their daughter of it never crossed their mind. A 21-year-old Division One athlete who's fit, who's in shape, who knows how to swim, doesn't just go underwater and not resurface without a reason. The coroner ruling the University of Cincinnati soccer player's death was caused by a high level of carbon monoxide. These boats, open air boats, it was an open air boat, can expose these sort of poisonous gases that is undetectable. Um, and our alley had no idea. Less than a year before Allie's death in 2021 and hundreds of miles away in Oklahoma, another family's lives torn apart. It had been a very long day. Um, it had been, you know, hot and we hadn't taken a, you know, food break or anything. We told the kids that we would take them for ice cream afterwards. Cassandra Free and her husband took their three boys out on the boat like they did so many times before. The boys stayed in that back seat as we traveled back to the to the dock. We got to the dock. Everybody was great. Cassandra says she pulled up to the dock and shut down the boat. The next thing that happened was I'm backing the trailer down and, you know, I'm looking in the rear view mirror and all of a sudden my husband's pounding on the window, you know, and he's yelling that Andy's gone. Ten-year-old Andrew Free had been sitting on the back of the boat motionless when he plunged into the water below. And the water was always our home. You know, he was, he was a strong swimmer. Um, so we couldn't figure it out at all. Just like the Sidlowski's, Cassandra and her husband had never been warned of carbon monoxide poisoning on a boat, which is why it came as a shock when the coroner told her little Andrew didn't drown. His carboxyhemoglobin was at 72%. The threshold for mortality is somewhere like around 35, 40%. He was likely brain dead before he even hit the water. They were very helpful in explaining to me um, situations where like the tailwinds might have played a part. They're like, well, if it's blowing back at you or if you, you know you're parked at the dock, even if your boat's not running, if other boats in the area. Are Carbon monoxide poisoning can be prevented through education. In fact, the U.S. Coast Guard has an entire checklist for every time you go out on the boat. Ensure ventilation throughout the boat and know where CO exhaust outlets are located. Be aware of nearby vessels idling. Confirm water flows from the exhaust outlet when the engine and generator starts. Listen for changes in exhaust sounds. Install and test the carbon monoxide detectors on your boat. And most importantly, make sure that all the passengers on board know about the dangers of carbon monoxide and, of course, have fun. So I don't think when you, when you buy a boat, I don't think there's a whole lot of education that goes into you know, stuff to be aware of when it comes to carbon monoxide poisoning. Um, 
you just kind of get the keys to the boat and you're free to put it on the water and, and do what you will with it. But it's something that everyone should educate themselves with. Daniel McCowan with the Anderson County Sheriff's Office says carbon monoxide can be hard to spot, especially since it doesn't have a smell. You can be out all day and your loved one is looking, you know, normal. Towards the end of the day, uh, starts feeling, you know, a little sluggish, a little tired, and then by the time it manifests itself that, hey, we can see this, you know, my loved one's unresponsive, it, it, it's unfortunately, it, you know, it's, it's made it too far at that point normally. These families just want to spread their message. <laughs> Allie's family created We Play for Three, which educates people on the dangers of carbon monoxide. And in 2023, Oklahoma lawmakers passed Andy's Law, which requires boats to have carbon monoxide warning stickers. South Carolina does not currently have a law requiring boats to have a carbon monoxide detector of any kind or a warning sticker on board. Reporting in studio, Margaret Ann Carter, Fox, Carolina News.